Welcome back to the program. Lou and Jackie here. So we're moving to food. Now it's time for drinks. I was going to say, can we say cheers uh, with a wonderful <laughs> beverage uh, provided by Somerset Winery this morning. And when you think Somerset, you got to thank uh, uh, Ron Mark. So thank you so much for being here. Also, Shanda Wagner joining us as well, because we have a lot of great events to talk about when it comes to this wonderful winery. But kind of remind us what makes Somerset so special. Well, we've been around almost 22 years, so uh, we're old. <laughs> All right, how, how old are Vince you? When, when did you plant the grapes, for example? Actually, we planted the grapes in 1989. Okay. And so it's getting close to a 30 year vineyard. And I'm the guy that was doing it when no one else was, so I made all the mistakes. So I've got grapes torn out and replanted just to find out what would grow in Iowa. How big of an area did you plant initially when you decided to do this? Well, I think I first started out with about five acres. And now we're up to 12 and a half acres. But back in 2000, I put on seminars to get guys to grow grapes for me because I was terribly successful. I had no idea what I was doing, but I needed more grapes. So I put on seminars to get guys to grow grapes, and I thought I'd get five or six guys. 150 people showed up. Oh my goodness. They all went out and planted grapes. Five years later, they started their own winery, so I built my own competition. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <clears throat> but, but yes, you do, because you take uh, frequent trips to Italy, and you're constantly vid visiting some of the places around the world that make some of the best wine. I do believe <clears throat> people should experience the wines of the world, not just what we get out of California. Right. And so I like to take tour groups around. And I, I lived in Italy for five years, and I lived with a family there, and I made some wine and learned how to do Italian cooking. And they had a beautiful daughter, so I had to stay there for a while. But I ended up with them coming, <coughs> um, friends coming with me to go to different places. And now I throw it out to the world, and we might have, you know, 30 people that we travel around and, and uh, visit wineries. Which is incredible, but you can bring that knowledge back here to central Iowa, incorporate that in what you do. And I, I still think it's amazing, even though we've had some incredible wineries, wineries, as you say, pop up around the region. The fact that we grow grapes here in Iowa. Is I Iowa really that great of a place to be growing grapes for well, wine? Well, when I was starting, I went to Iowa State University and I said, what kind of grapes should I grow in Iowa? And they said, None. None. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you don't think of Iowa uh, in shouldn't. grapes. And, and when you hear there's vineyards in Iowa, you, you really go, seriously? Really? And well, can the, it be profitable? The problem was the 2,4-D drift that comes from the cornfields, it can decimate vineyards. But now we have Roundup Ready corn and Roundup Ready beans. Subsequently, they don't use 2,4-D so much anymore. So it's a more healthy environment for grapes. Okay. And, and what kind of grapes are we producing? Does it does it specify a certain kind of wine? Like, could you drink a, a glass of wine from Iowa and be like, "Yep, I know where that came from because of the certain kind of grape"? Some. We grow French hybrids, and they have been crossbred with the wild Native American grape, the Riparia. Subsequently, they're cold hardy, and the cold hardiness is really the issue. You know, those those California grapes like Cabernet and Chardonnay. They're kind of wimpy. They disappear at 20 below zero. <laughs> they, just, they, <clears throat> they just can't handle it. Huh? They don't have car hearts for them over there, do they? No. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, I know you have quite a, uh, an array of wine selection, uh, but what are some of the popular ones right now, especially in the summertime? Well, I, I really like our, our Vignol. That's a French hybrid grape that's almost like a Riesling, but it has some character and it's absolutely magnificent. Also, we have a wonderful Vidal Blanc. Vidal is a French hybrid grape that is just almost like a Chardonnay, but we don't oak it, so it's more crisp. That's nice. So we have some really wonderful white wines here. Our red wines are, are some of those from uh, the University of uh, Minnesota. They have a great breeding program now. So Frontenac is a cold, hardy, real heavy red. So we have some nice grapes that we're growing here. And we do a lot of blending, like the Cabamoche the party in a bottle. Oh, I like there a good go. party in a bottle. And I and like as you said, you have quite a variety, but one thing I, I enjoy about your wines is that they're not heavy. Like I can enjoy them and still feel very much refreshed and some wonderful flavors that are happening as well. But uh, <coughs> since we have uh, our eye on the bottle right now, talk about the Cabamoche. Cabamoche is a blend of two different grapes, Catawba and Marichal Foch. And I went to the label company and I could not come up with a name. And I said, man, what should we call it? And the lady at the label company says, Catawba and Maricel Foch. She stared at the ceiling and said, Cabamoche. And I said, print it. 
<laughs> Done. Sealed and delivered. Why do we call this a party in a bottle or even in our beautiful glasses this morning? Actually, it's uh, similar to a sangria straight out of the bottle. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's very easy to drink. I think we sell 40,000 bottles of that a year. Wow. Really? <laughs> so I don't have to worry about marinating in fruit. I, it's all ready to grow. It's ready to go it's right out of the bottle. I but we find out if we add the fruit and stuff, it's just fantastic. It makes it even that much better. Well, we also want to talk to Shanda uh, today because not only are we talking great grapes grown here in Iowa and some amazing wine, uh, wonderful events that are happening at Somerset as well. Yeah, we have a Sangria Saturday happening this Saturday with music from 6 to 9 by the Johnny Nove Cane Duo. Okay. We also have a mimosa brunch happening next Saturday morning, and you're going to eat al fresco style among the vines. And then we have our Sunday tunes every Sunday from 2 to 5 with Teachers Get In Free August 12th. Teachers Get In Free. Yes, wow. we appreciate that? the teachers. We find they need a little shot before they go back to school. I was going to say, a little, <laughs> little last minute <laughs> relaxation before uh, we're and that's going to be that's going to be during fair time too. So we're going to yep. have a lot of teachers. will probably be in the Des Moines area too. So if yeah. they look for something to do, they can just make a stop down there. Yeah, we appreciate them. So they need to come grab grab a glass of sangria. I, I love it. And we were just talking about basically you have sangria already made in yeah. the bottle with the Kevin Moshe. Um, so when do things kick off uh, with Sangria Sunday on this Sunday? This Sunday, uh, music starts six and goes until nine. Okay. Beautiful. Your cover is seven dollars and includes a large glass of sangria just like this. Really? Yep. Saturday night. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, absolutely love it. And you were talking about mimosa brunch as well. When does that all take place? That is next Saturday morning next Saturday. from 10 to 1. Okay. Yeah. And you were saying a certain style. Of, are we literally out in You are going to, your tables are set amongst the vines. Amongst so the you're, vines. you're eating amongst weather, the vines. Weather permitting, of you're going to sit out in the vines. So Unbelievable. That's yeah. a really neat atmosphere, isn't it? It's now, Have you done this before or is this we the first have. time? So this will be our second mimosa brunch. And the first one was a success, so we went ahead and planned another one. And yep. I imagine it's one of those you probably want to reserve your spot now because they do fill up. Yeah, so ticket sales will be closing out um, next week. So okay. check us out online at somersetwine.com and you can go to our events and click on Mimosa Brunch. That is awesome. Now I want to go back to you, Ron, real quick. You mentioned uh, how, ma how many acres you have that you're growing grapes. You said, what, 12 acres mm -hmm. that you have right now. How many bottles of wine can you get out of those 12 acres? Someone asked <coughs> that question a couple weeks ago and they had, I said, I have no idea. Well, that only produces about 40,000 bottles. 40,000 bottles? But a couple. But we're manufacturing <laughs> about 130,000 right around there. So that's why I needed more vineyards, so I can buy grapes from my neighbors. And uh, it's, it's quite the industry now. We got almost 300 commercial vineyards and 100 wineries. So Iowa went from the amount of colonies to this really major, I think it generates like $40 million in economic oh impact goodness. a year. I had so no idea. The governor, gov Governor Branstead loved us. He, he never gave us any money to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly we had this industry. So. so you want to support your local wineries. And speaking of which, uh, you guys are just a little bit south of the metro. If people wanted to visit Somerset Winery, where would they have to go? We're just 15 minutes south, um, right before Indianola. Absolutely. Can't miss it. Easy and it to get there. Absolutely gorgeous. If you've never been there, you, you have to see it just because of the aesthetics. It's gorgeous, but also, you know, pretty good wine. Go along with Wonderful. it. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Right. It is.